What's up, people? Hopefully, y'all can see me okay. Um, hold on. Let's get some more light in here. Oh, that's better. I got a little light over there, too. So, the truck is a mess right now. I just pulled all the bedding off the bed, did laundry. So, I gotta put laundry up. Um, I got a new car. Y'all seeing me do stuff. So the truck is going to the shop after I deliver this load. Um, I got a load. What I potatoes? What I potatoes? I think I got potatoes. I, potatoes. I just took a shower, so I shouldn't be dry, but who knows? Anyway, I, I got this car right here. It has rollers on the bottom for seven bucks. And I've been looking for one of these bad boys. Um, my friend that I stayed with, my places, when I broke the ankle, she uses something similar for, she's a school teacher for school. And they wanted a whole bunch of money for them. And I happened to be in Kansas. I remember, it was one, it was a, a Petro. I think it was Kansas. It collapses and latches, and I store it behind the seat. So what happens is I have a duffel bag, a rolling duffel, but it only holds so much. I have a bigger one, but I don't use the big ones for packing all my crap up um, when I get off the truck, or you know, for stuff. It was what I used on my training because he packed, packed my everything my everything was in there it was bedding clothes that's why I don't have a lot of clothes because I had everything in that huge duffel bag and so um, I'm looking for this because it's easier especially if I do linen um, my duffel bag it'll hold like my dirty clothes because usually I wash clothes about once or twice a week but I you know because I'm a heavy set person my clothes are big so if I have heavy set stuff like sweats and stuff, they took up a lot of space. So um, it fills up the duffel bag. So I actually have these huge plastic bags. Get these from Walmart. Let's see that. That's the bedding. Get those from Walmart, and they're um, made by Glad and Ziploc. Uh, and you can get them either the tall ones or you can get them wide. Either one, I've had both. Um, I like the tall ones. I think a little bit better. I didn't first. I didn't think I was gonna like them, but I do like them because I can really put a lot of stuff in them. And it goes up uh, and it's bigger than the other ones the wide ones <laughs> it, holds, uh, it holds more stuff um this is the different video and i'm wearing the same shirt in this video it's a different video and I'm probably, let me take this off anyway because i got my t-shirt underneath um i just got through with my shower i did laundry and then i brought the laundry back out here and i also like that cart because i just realized i can use it for my shower stuff because i I used to try to, sometimes I do a quickie shower, and a quickie shower is just my little jubits bag on my back, and I end up putting the same clothes on, um, but sometimes I do um, a detail shower, and uh, that's where like I cut my hair today, and I shampoo, and I do other stuff, brush teeth, and all that other stuff, and uh, that's a little bit more extensive, where I'm not just jumping in the shower, rinse, you know, washing off, and putting the same back clothes, and then riding out. Um, I'm in Fargo, North Dakota tonight. Um, I'm trying to get the videos. It might be I might be here tonight at Petro. Oh, 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 oh! I was on my way to Love's, which is the next exit, and then I was like, oh, because my the new GPS. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit here too. Um, the Petro was on the right hand side of the corner. I was gonna merge this with another video, but I may do two independent videos. I think I'm gonna do two independent videos. So the Petro was on the left hand. I've been here before, and they got like a steak, uh, steak place, like a steak sub, sub place, shake Charlie's or something like that. It was really good. They got a Hortons. I haven't had them. I guess they're like a donut shop or a bakery. 
and then they had a restaurant that's different from most Petros. It was uh, called Dolly's. Um, it's on uh, I-94 exit 278 in Fargo, North Dakota. The Dolly's, yeah, I, they had really good rating on Yelp. I almost went and got sushi. I almost got left and took got sushi. But because Dolly's had such a good rating, I went ahead and ate at Dolly's. My meal tonight, which will tell you how I felt about it because I really didn't take pictures of it. Because uh, I, if I like some food, I take pictures of it. But it was uh, pork chops with, uh, it was that bell pepper, onion, and pineapple. Which sounds really good, the pork chops. Um, and then I had a baked potato, which they put way too much cheddar cheese on. I just wanted um, sour cream and this light cheese. But they put like, I don't know, it was way too much cheese. And some bacon. So I didn't really finish that. It was just overwhelmingly not good. The pork chops were okay. They originally forgot that kind of like I guess you want to call it like a the the, the, the peppers, onions, and, and pineapple. They forgot that all on top. So they went back and it part of it felt like it was frozen because it wasn't even heated. It was supposed to be heated. Um, I did go back in later, and I just got a slice of apple pie because I wanted to sit down and have a dessert. The best part of everything was going back for the dessert, the little nightcap dessert. That was it. Nothing. The meal itself was disgusting. The poor girl in there was by herself, so she's running around like a chicken with her head cut off trying to serve all the tables. Um, so they need more help. Um, she recommended the spaghetti. Next time I probably should have went with the spaghetti. But like I said, it's all good. <laughs> um, I hate the idle thing. Um, we'll talk about that too in a minute. But anyway, um, the truck, I uh, told you the bunk heater is not working right. And so what happens is I've had to turn off as many 12 volt appliances because all of a sudden I'll get a beeping sound. Um, I'm on a machine that I'm supposed to wear at night and it knocks out my inverter so that I can use it. <laughs> so I have to get up in the middle of the night and I have to come turn the truck on. So I'm not really getting a solid sleep, but I'm sleeping a lot longer because I have to keep doing turn the truck on and make sure the battery stay charged. So hopefully they'll get that fixed. Plus there's another issue that may be tied to that. I'm not sure, but I'll bring it up when I get the truck in. I'm about 544 miles from where I'm dropping. My load doesn't deliver until Sunday morning. Uh, so I'm going to try to get up and get out of here early tomorrow morning. Um, I should be really close to my delivery. Um, so I'm going to try to get as many miles as I can tomorrow. I was going to knock out 60 more miles and stop at another place, but I have showers here at TA, at Petro TA. And I had showers at Love's, but Love's doesn't often, oftentimes Love's doesn't have laundry, whereas Petro and TA, Flying J, they do pilot. They all have usually laundry facilities, Love's doesn't. That's the other thing about Love's I don't really care for. I like that you can get in and out for a shower, but they don't have laundry facilities. That's the one thing. I don't know if I've been to a Love's that has had a laundry facility. I'm trying to think about it. Yeah, I don't know of any loves that I've ever been to that has a laundry facility. Um, so that's one of the things I don't like about loves. Uh, like I said, small parking. Loves pilot, not big on their parking. They're usually small. Um, they tried to send me another load because my driver manager didn't put anything out. So you guys know I'm shopping at the shopping for companies. Um, and, and like I said, I really, really like my driver manager. Uh, today they sent me send me a very nice email you know we're, you're what we're looking for at XYZ company um, we're on the same page about safety because I'm a safety first and you know <laughs> the money it'll come but I, I, you know you can't spend money dead <laughs> you can't spend money in prison for killing somebody so I'm usually I'm much more safety first um, and I'm not a speed demon I, I'm just honest about that um, there's a brother on here oh, man. I mean, we've been communicating and got me I'm gonna hit hit me up at that email address and um, with the information and uh, I'm definitely gonna take a look at it and uh, matter of fact trucker Bill and I were talking about it because I told him who you recommended and um, I'll, I'll take a look at it um, I don't know use your name on here but you know who you are and so I'm gonna definitely take a look I didn't know it was a truckload division and he had told me that's who he thought you were talking about so um, definitely I'll, I'll take a look at it um, I'm not a speed demon, so understand that if any of you guys recommend, because I've had another trucker recommend, I think it's VXI or some company of that nature, and uh, it was drive in. I'm not huge on drive in because I don't want to be climbing in, the back, in and out the back. I don't want to touch freight. 
and uh, I really don't want to, have to even sweep out a freaking trailer. I, I just honestly, I, me in the back of the trailer, we're done. After the fall, I'm done. I'm not sweeping the trailer. <laughs> I, I, I don't even climb up to do the load locks. I put the load locks in the back. And if they don't let me do it from the dock, then it just don't get done. I'm just honest like that. Um, everywhere has let me do it from the dock because I just explained to them, hey, I fell off the trailer and climbing up in there is not going to happen. It's not the safest move anyway. And, and um, it's just not safe. It really isn't. And after the fall, it, it just totally changed my whole perspective. Um, I have a safety vest here. Or I have shoes. If, if you know the required shoes, I'm going to get some steel toed boots on here uh, when I go to Lubbock. But, um, again, I'm trying to hang into the end of the year here at this company. Um, like I said, I really, really like the driver manager. I almost hate leaving because I like her. But the reality is I need some things to chuck in. And I, this video, actually, I think I want to call it Why People Jump Companies. I was reading a, uh, I was listening to a video. Um, he's a popular trucker on YouTube, like I, I'm not going to mention his name. Um, I want to, actually, I got a couple of his videos I want to talk about without mentioning him um one is the one where he the company told him what he should and should talk about on youtube and why they don't like youtube truckers and uh i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna i want to probably that might even do that video tonight because it's been on my mind but he he got a comment on a video that he did because he's was considering going back otr for the company i'm actually with and um he's looking at a couple different companies and what he misses about it right now he's working I think LTL um, and I guess they you know they kind of got pissed off, pissed off at him about one of the videos because he showed some things on the equipment I mentioned slightly in another video that why there's such a turnover in trucking and um, one of the biggest reasons there's turnovers in trucking is because you're not getting truckers are looking for their fit okay and because of what I call the trucking game, all the trucking companies have a lot of similarity because they've been getting away with stuff for years. Which actually, we can actually, this video can actually address both issues. His issue with why not to discuss certain things and what you post about your company, okay? He posted a video showing that the Qualcomm that he had, he didn't work, he couldn't communicate, and then he turned it over and the wires are all frazzled on the back of this thing, so no wonder it didn't work. He then goes to another company uh, to try to get on with them. I don't know. I don't think he got on with them. But he tried to go there to get on with them. And they kind of, you know, they gave him a tour, talked to him, told him why they weren't particularly big on YouTube truckers. And they used to have three major YouTube truckers on there at their, at their facility, okay, at their company. Um, I don't think they have that representation anymore on YouTube because all three of those truck drivers are no longer with them. I know one went back and they left. Um... And then the other two, they went, they're, they're on their separate journeys. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go from my, this is my personal opinion on why I think companies are not liking the YouTube. It exposes you. It exposes the industry. It exposes the practices. It exposes things about the equipment. It exposes some of the behaviors. It, it, it puts the industry out on front street. So, the same thing that happened with the Black Lives Matter campaign, which I'm, I'm yes and no on that for a lot of different reasons. I understand it, but I don't totally agree with it. And, and I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole other conversation. And I am African American. Um, I, we've known for years that police abuse has happened. What happened though, technology advanced, and now you can't take Joe so-and-so and beat his ass in a corner and then say, oh, he tripped and flipped, because now Sally Sue's got pictures of you beating his ass in the corner. And this is the same thing that's happening with trucking. So now, like, I got a video of the company that I'm with, and I was with them before, of a particular facility, I don't have it posted, where they had plumbing issues in 2010. It's 2017 and those plumbing issues are worse than what they were in 2010. And I, I won't show it now, obviously I can't show it now. And I won't say the company, even if I show it later, I will never say the company. Um, all right, so it stops, I'll have to blend these together. 
anyway so what's happened is the trucking companies in my opinion have becoming exposed so the same thing that happened with the police um, with new technology is happening in other industries trucking definitely being one of them and so what happens is oh <laughs> we don't want you to tell XYZ so in video they told him they didn't want youtubers talking about their paychecks they didn't want them talk I think the paychecks is one I, I, I may be wrong on that they don't want them saying their miles um, they don't want to tell location of loads I do understand a little bit of that but the reason behind it was bull uh, that he gave um, uh, oh and speed of truck okay so man it's, no, it's just kind of long but here I'm going to try to deal with it all of that exposes you to have to do something so let's use the first one which is what I don't want you to tell your location and the reasoning if I remember him correctly his reasoning that they told him was well if you know you tell where you're at and we have somebody who was trying to get home time let's say for example Lubbock Texas that's where I want to go home time and some youtuber from my company says oh yeah I get loads of Lubbock all the damn time out of Illinois but they got me going all over Timbuktu and can't never get me to Lubbock and so my home time is extended so they're saying well people are calling complaining because they didn't get a run to Lubbock or whatever city or state it is as they should this person is locked in this truck for whatever limited time you could the company rules for my company is every week you out you get a day off but my company tells me you can only do three days and if you go beyond the three days in some cases in most cases then we actually put your truck back in rotation so it's a threat to say we really don't want you home more than three days otherwise we take your truck and put it back in rotation which is some bull that's bull um <laughs> it really is. It's some bull crap. Because what we do is very dangerous. Now, I understand probably if you go more than five days. But to me, for every week you go out and you should just say, we limit you to five days off. We limit you to four days off. I, I get, get that. Three days is not a lot of time. Because like I said, by the time I get home, the first thing I do is sleep. Then you're trying to catch up on any kind of bill, personal items, medical stuff that you have to do. You're running around like a chicken with your head off. Then you got your last day there of doing whatever you do with your family. And then you're back on the road. That's not a lot of time. So, in, in honestly, I really think they should just go ahead and give you four or five days off. And then let you come on back. And the truck sitting for four or five days is not a big freaking deal. Because you got, you're going to move freight regardless, okay? If the truck was broke down, the freight don't stop. The loads get moved or the handle. Um, that was one and, and I, I, what I felt was really it's a game because they want that person to still run they may not maneuver them <coughs> to be in areas of the country where they can actually get the time off they need to get home so I just thought that was bull and it was a way for them to cover up the fact that hey we're not meeting everybody's home time requests that was one um the other issue that they brought up was the miles on the truck. So something Trucker Bill told me is I guess the company I'm with, people have been leaving it because they're pissed off about the fact we're governing at 60 miles an hour on pedal. On uh, If I put it in cruise control, it can go up to 62 miles an hour, which is still exceptionally slow uh, in most areas of the country because most speed limits are 65 plus. So in reality, this truck should be governed at 65 and it should be cruise control at 67. Um, 68 to me really cruise control I understand why a newbie company may do 60 because you got a lot of these kids out here that don't understand the power and they, they can't even freaking operate the truck at 60 miles an hour let alone that but I think that after your first year uh, you're assigned to a truck they should be able to change the governing on that truck to 65 and 68 so again that's you know and the real reason the companies do it has absolutely nothing to do with safety it's fuel economy so the slower the truck goes, the better fuel economy they get. And that's what it has to deal with, is fuel economy. It is very little about safety. That's secondary. The first is always about the money. So it's really about fuel economy, and that's why I was watching Truck 47 and Brenda, and I made a comment on her video. She's upset with her company because they were governing the trucks. I think it's 63, and then I told her, I said, 63 is a lot better where I'm at. It's a 60. 
and she's like oh my god you know so you you um that that's you no know, excuse so what's happening though is because people are starting to leave and go to other companies some companies are changing the governing in order to make the person stay because again we've got a hundred thousand driver shortage we don't want to lose you we need you to stay with our company because we need to move freight and we can't move freight right now if you're going somewhere else okay then what was the other one he told about speed um there was something else i can't remember but overall what i gathered was it's really that they're exposed and when you expose somebody you're going to have to either deal with your excuse me your shit <laughs> or keep being exposed and after a while it doesn't make you look at it as a company if you're not willing to deal with it so my belief system that has happened is that okay we don't want to necessarily fix everything and we do like band-aiding stuff so we don't want to be exposed and now it's being exposed it's being exposed that you're making promises you're not keeping it's being exposed how the industry actually works how cutthroat it is and all that's being exposed and see before it was a deception because you couldn't prove any of it you could talk about it but talk is cheap now we got photos we got you know documented evidence we got multitude of people working for different companies and telling the same experience so now trucking is exposed and now if we want to do better in the industry we've got to change well, change takes time, money, and most people, not even the companies, like to go through change because this change is going to take a cost, a change in mindset, a change in atmosphere. And we don't want to do that. The same with the police force, with the abuses that they've been doing for years in the black and Latino and minority communities. And now they're being exposed because of a little known thing as a camera and social media. So we now see the overzealous abuse in that in that particular industry well same thing happens in trucking so the turnover that happens in trucking happens because you aren't meeting what the person wants and it's it's not unusual because it carries every company so what you're trying to do is find the company find the driver manager find the money find the fit and that may take going through 10 15 20 companies before it is I've had a taste of it with pride and a taste of it with Conway um, Pride's trucks were nice. They, they, even though I had one that was older and had issues, they, they were almost like a custom truck you would buy for an individual. They were the company that said, whatever you want to put on the truck, just bring it and our, our people put it in for you. So, so if I wanted a refrigerator on the truck and it didn't have refrigerator, they would let me put that in. I know that now I think they've added satellite TV to their trucks. I had a, a really strong inverter on my truck. I could run a refrigerator. I ran an apartment refrigerator off there. I had a microwave on my truck. I had my TV on my truck because I live off my truck. With this starter company I'm with, I can't do that. And so you do become a little spoiled. Same way with Conway, I had the same thing. Also with both Conway and Pride, I could fuel wherever the hell I wanted to. I wasn't governed by the laws of the starter company you fuel here. Um, and I wasn't really worried about an inverter issue because I could idle my truck so my batteries always stayed charged and my inverter always worked. Whereas here, they've set it up now, it wasn't like this when I was with them in 2010, where the truck automatically cuts off at certain temperatures, which to me is asinine, but it's what they do because every dime they're trying to do, they're pocketing. So they are extremely cheap, even though they're in debt, right? So, you know, and, and I want a dog, but you can't have a dog because somebody did something with a dog and they, they, you know, we instead of dealing with that person, we're just going to say, okay, we don't, we don't have any dogs or cats or whatever on the truck. So for me, like me moving companies, A, has been some of the other experiences I've mentioned that haven't been good. But B, because I want a dog and because I want an inverter and because I want a truck. Well, I want to be in a grown-up company. Um, today, I'll share this. Um, my driver manager sent me an email because they have levels here. And I forgot what you have your entry level and you go silver and gold and platinum and so forth, diamond, whatever. So I guess I made this silver rating, and um, I know they gave me a performance bonus, two or three hundred bucks, um, on this last check. And she writes me a very nice email because I do like her, and we're on the same page on safety. 
But I hate to tell her, that's not going to stop me from, and I haven't told her I'm, you know, looking to go, but that's not going to stop me from looking, because all the other stuff outweighs what you're doing. A, when I first came in, they told me I'm making 39 cents a mile. I'm not, I'm making 36. Sometimes it's a little bit higher or lower, depending on the load. But for the most part, I average 36 cents a mile. That's really low for somebody with three years' experience. Granted, I was off the road. Um, they are now talking about, I guess they're doing some pay increase because of the murder. Um, I, again, I can't get logged onto the technology. I can't get to the technology from my computer, which sucks. And because I can get to it, but there's certain areas of the site it won't let me go through unless I go to our, uh, they call it a kiosk at the company, which half ass normally don't, you can't even get into it, doesn't work. Um, and they know it doesn't work. So why they don't just release access so you can just do it through your computer, I have no idea. Uh, but certain things you can't get to on your computer, you have to go into a terminal event, which is just, again, ass a nine. Um, well, I feel like I'm dry. Um, I just have to find me a Walmart tomorrow, too. Um, I just like I'm dry, y'all. Car mix. So, I, I know the reason for the turnover, and the turnover has to do with me and Bill were talking about it. Drivers want some simple things, and most drivers, I mean, and they try to come up with all these grandiose ideas. That's a corporate thing. Instead of going to the people at the level that they and say, what do y'all want? Instead, we're going to throw brainstormers out, we're going to create position levels, and let me tell you what I want. I want to make good persons per mile. I don't want to touch any freight. I want a dog on my truck, and I want to be able to idle the truck when I want to, as well as have an inverter. <coughs> So that I can enjoy common things like making a meal on the truck, nuking my food, having a microwave, having a fridge if I want to. Those are some of the common things I want on my truck without being bothered. Most trucks are fuel efficient now. So, you know, and the only other thing that I would like is an APU, but if you're not willing to do that, at least let me idle and run a damn inverter on a damn truck. Um, the truck is not eating that much fuel anymore. The older truck she has, but these newer trucks are very fuel efficient. So, that's why you see a jump because people aren't meeting the needs. The company will promise one thing. I was promised 39 cents a mile. I'm not getting that. I get 36 cents a mile. Um, they, you know, decent equipment. That's another thing people want. And, you know, right now, this is a it's a decent truck. It's brand virtually new, but whoever had it before me, there were some things that I noticed that weren't done on the truck. Um, the B service hadn't been done. They had jacked up the tire from looks like a scrape on the side, and um, like I said, I was just happy. I, I I was happy the truck wasn't as old as I thought it was, like old as Methuselah. I was happy about that. So. You know, I read the ball. So now, my hope is that when it goes in here, they can fix it. Because they want to stick with this truck and get something newer, hopefully. I don't, you know, even if, I don't, I just, even if it's for a short time, I don't want to be stuck. But anyway, yeah, they gave me, and I don't know if it's just the way, because I think they're bleeding drivers. But, yeah, a lot of trucking companies don't tell you. They don't tell you the truth. So the reason they really don't like YouTubers, in my opinion, is because the industry's getting exposed and either you fix your shit or you keep losing drivers to other companies and a lot of them are going to smaller companies who will maintain their stuff uh, because they have to in order to try to make money. Anyway, guys, uh, go ahead and leave a message and I'm going to, if you have any questions, I might do another video later on. I want to do one on the racism in trucking. Uh, that's another topic because I was watching somebody today who was saying that you know he, he puts knowledge out there mainly for us to do better in the industry and I uh, I definitely want to address that because Bill that was something Bill mentioned to me when I first came into trucking he talked about the racial issue and I really would like to get back to Denver and sit down and talk with him um, eventually I will I mean Denver Oregon and talk to him eventually I will but I haven't yet anyway 
guys, people ask, I'm going to blend these two together um, and uh, tell you more. But I don't know. I think they got a feeling I'm going to bounce. So that's why, you know. I don't know. But like I said, if I could take my jar manager with me, it would be great because I really like her. That's about the only thing I'm going to miss is uh, working with her. Cause she does, you know, even when I was pissed off, she listened. And I told her it wasn't directed at her, but she's going to get the earful of it. And, and the reason why. So, um, let's see. And I sent pictures of all that stuff with where the airlines were hanging and stuff. So, she's supposed to talk to the driver manager of that person. I don't know if that's going to really happen or not. I've stopped worrying about it. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Anyway, people, let me get up here and get this bed made, get the truck straightened out. And I'm, I can see I'm fading into the wind. Like I said, I just took my shower. So.